country here in the United States. I want you to understand the purpose of this brief presentation is going to discuss the United States housing market as it relates to SPSS. Uh, just to give you a quick refresher. SPSS is the statistical package for social sciences or social and behavior sciences. Okay, um, today I am going to discuss some good research studies. One is a good thesis um, by now Dr. Corsini from the Uni um, Georgia Tech. I think it's Georgia Tech Institute of Technology. But I'm going to get back to it. Um, I came across this study which sparked my um, intent this morning. Also, I gathered some good information from the National Association of Realtors and is going to come together with closing with the United States Department of Agriculture, Rural Housing Development, and the current housing trends just from the federal perspective. Again, here's your quick recap of SPSS. What can we use it for? qualitative quantitative experimental and empirical examination you're going to see this with some of these studies that cited you're going to see how other nations are now modeling their real estate um i'm going to refer to china china now has an expanding geopolitical role on the international scale and so they have come up with their own designs while modeling those designs after those used in the west important factors of home um, construction selling and ownership in america involves a desired population always <laughs> in a desired location and desired future developments now i covered uh these factors in an earlier video that you can refer to um that um has spss in the title it's a three-part um presentation i also want you all to understand how this impacts the united states um, housing market now and in the future again there is always a desired population there's a desired location for these populations and this actually um is the core of future development and thus planning now most areas are designated before there is an owner for either section of the land, whether it's residential or commercial. The planning and develop again are proactive. What does this mean? This means before ground is broken, there is a program already put in place that's going to guide the following decades. Now, if this is a desired population to inhabit this desired area, then this is going to definitely um, be something that's um, guided for 100 years versus a decade or two. Uh, desired areas include are not limited to river, downtown, and historic districts. These are your premier zones, especially for large commercial enhancement, development, such as your venues, business zones. You can look anywhere in any area in downtown United States of America, especially if it is a capitalist-driven design area with modest residential spaces most often again you're going to see these spaces you know with nice mom and pop shops on the bottom um your spas now you have expanding remote work spaces or virtual locations for people to come in and rent for a certain amount of time uh Anyone who's lived in or about Denver, Colorado, you know exactly what I'm talking about, especially with their downtown layout, hence why former President Donald Trump owns a, a large bit of it. Okay, back to the presentation on the United States Housing and SPSS. A regression model analysis is used in real estate evaluation because it helps to narrow down the examination and progression models for large sex across the nation, that's this country and others. Now, here's this study I actually want you all to pay attention to. The same is responsible, again, for China's Real Estate Confidence Index, or RCI. This is the team here that put forward this formally in 2007. It can be found via ResearchGate. 
this tells you how the Chinese are using this within their walls and in other countries. For example, um, the Chinese is um, in Africa and they're also in the South Pacific. Um, you see them in Sri Lanka, they're now in Tonga, but where they've been in Africa, you see the industrial development and the expansion. You see them in Malawi. Uh, they were in Nigeria quite a bit, but where they have been, you see a modeling from the United States um, housing market and the commercial market. You see plazas, you see malls, you see stacked living or apartments. Um, Anyone who's familiar with the continent of Africa, you did not see a lot of apartments outside of South Africa. Um, you, where the Chinese have been, you're seeing this, um, and, the, and that is to maximize um, revenue um, with the stack housing, whether it's condos, apartments, etc. And most of um, West Africa and to East Africa, you had single family dwellings of all sorts. Now, Another great statistical research study, um, again, begins with now Dr. Richard, Dr. Kenneth Richard Corsini is where he um, produced, I think, one of the best <laughs> and most relevant mathematical presentations of our housing market and availability in relation to need and demand across groups. This was a good thesis because it was adopted by a lot of people across the housing industry. The research established credibility regardless of goodwill, especially when goodwill is not intended for undesired populations or those of lesser demographics. Um, I don't think I need to elaborate there. Those are not my personal feelings, but this is, this is what happened. His thesis offered a full spectrum analysis for future ownership, project allocation, building initiatives, and other factors for the American housing industry. I think it is important to say here that this was from the College of Architecture, okay, which is which was guided, and this thesis was guided by Dr. Baba. It is easy to follow. Um, it is outlined with a table of contents. You have um, key terms for you. Now let's bring this full circuit as I try to bring it to a close in less than 15 minutes. Um, the National Association of Realtors is one of America's largest trading organizations with more than 1.5 million members. But I want you to understand right why. Why would this organization focuses on delivering information um, not just for themselves but for at the, at the local level, the state, the federal level. And they're also, um, let's say, outsourcing their services from within this country to others <laughs> by way of providing expansive data across individual and group profiles at metro and county levels, not country levels. Sorry about that. Um, now, the NAR tracks housing availability housing shortages, especially across demographics, and provides live state t statistics. Now this here is very interesting for me because they actually have interactive maps that you can follow by web links on their website and you can see the numbers um, for groups. So I want you all to understand that when, you're, when you look at cities like Denver, Aurora, Colorado, Oakland, California, Los Angeles, California, over to New York City, down to Florida. Everyone knows um, just how bad homelessness is here in the United States, how it is increasing, and not so across groups, <laughs> but mostly among uh, African Americans. And now you're seeing it with uh, white Americans of a lower income bracket, you see an increase in outdoor living. You see it in places that you would not have expected, especially if you're out west um, in the desert areas between California, Arizona, and Nevada, where uh, locals 
are actually suggesting to homeless people that they move out into certain parts of the desert where they are less visible and thus undesired by people and communities such as Lancaster. These are your areas like Oakland where you have large groups of people in smaller spaces or there, you know, or less space in between them where you see them along major roadways under underpasses and you cannot avoid it, especially between Denver and Aurora um, where you see people with the makeshift uh, camps. So um, that's just something for you to think about when you consider the fact that you have organizations, you have companies and entities such as the National Association of Realtors that live track this data, they share it and make it available at the state level and the federal level. Now, how does the NAR have um, such an impact on uh, data? Again, it's not just the type of research that's conducted, it's why it is conducted and whom is responsible for funding it. And that's the key takeaway from my presentations. I want you to understand that no one is doing this for free or without purpose. So back to it. The United States Department of Agriculture, Rural Housing and Development, or RHD, has within itself a rural housing service. This is a federal program that offers direct or guaranteed loans for single family borrowers, which can be an individual or co-applicants or multi multifamily property buyers to buy or improve homes. This means that People can put in a formal federal application. It's either type of applicant for the program that has one of two options. Now you can buy single family detached property, single family attached property, or you can buy a multifamily property, which could be a duplex to a single or multiple apartment building site doesn't matter what type of um, floor plan it is but this is just what this means okay just to just give you a general understanding now strategic economic and community development funding is via a form build provision that supports regional economic and community development and planning what does this mean people this means that the United States federal government has formal programs by way of the United States Department of Agriculture that should assist people um, with the ability to obtain and thus secure more than adequate affordable housing. But what you see is a decline in American applicants, okay? Um, since 2019, there has been a steady increase in denials as high as 50% to as much as 84%. Okay, now this study was conducted by Linden Tree. This information was made available to the public by CNBC in August 2007. Now, what does this tell you? That there is a huge problem with home ownership and an expanding mortgage gap approval for um, basic applications and I say basic applications to um, emphasize that uh, rural housing development often starts lending at or around seventy thousand dollars now you can find modest two bedrooms um, at seventy thousand dollars to maybe two hundred thousand um, dollars in the United States um, particularly around the southeastern market, even somewhere like Fresno, California. So these high denial rates for a growing number of applicants in the African American community is more than alarming. And again, it's been steadily increasing since 2019. So you have understand that future ownership in America is dwindling. Forever ownership is all you don't make good on those taxes. The property can be taken and put up for sale. Follow the sources and read this information for yourself. I want to say consider international markets with permanent ownership possibilities. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time.